Hello, everybody, and welcome to Industrial Automation. It doesn't have to. In case you're new to the program, I'm Brandon Ellis. I'm your host and also the owner of Elatech. As we jump into the episode for today, I want to ask that you hit that follow button and subscribe button based upon the platform that you're listening on. And if you're listening specifically on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and you enjoy what you hear today, leave us a five-star rating and review. We sure would appreciate it. Now that we've got the marketing out of the way, I just want to say thanks for tuning in. So let's get started. Well, it's 2023, and welcome to Industrial Automation. It doesn't have to. I'm Brandon Ellis, your host, and with me, as always, is the lovely Beth Elliott. Well, hello, Brandon. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Guys, it's 2023. Last time we spoke to you, it was 2022. And so, yes, Happy New Year. Yes, it's been a while. We we took a month off. We did. So that's fine. So uh, this is going to be coming out on uh, Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day. Yes. So you missed us through January, but we got plenty to talk about. We certainly do. And uh, so we're going to be uh, uh, pressing on through uh, some things here, but uh, I am committed, my New Year's resolution, to 35 minutes. Oh, okay. Let's do it. (laughs) Let's get right into it then. Yeah, that's right. What's new, Brandon? Well, we've, we've actually, uh, so 2023 has kicked off with some pretty exciting things. I'm not going to go through all of them because that's content for the future. Yes, and it would go over 35 minutes. That's right, and we've got a time <laughs> limit. So uh, we, we do, uh, I will say this, some exciting things, seeing some inventories that are coming back. Well, that's encouraging. Especially in our region. So uh, for those of you in our region that work with Elatech in the Eastern Tennessee and, and Tennessee region, and then for some of our lines, even outside of the Tennessee area, uh, certainly um, give us a call. Uh, we can give you some insights on some of those. The other thing is we, um, we have... Uh, some new curriculum? New curriculum, yes. Thank you. Uh, for our training center. Uh, so we've got, we've got some new curriculums that are coming out and renewed curriculums. Uh, so within our robot uh, offerings, uh, training offerings, uh, some with Siemens trainings and things of that nature, uh, for more maintenance tape, uh, maintenance specific things that we'll be talking about. So as the year goes on, tune in, uh, stay, uh, hit the subscribe buttons and all that kind of stuff to make sure that, that you are aware uh, when new, new things come out. Uh, and then finally, we got some new lines and some new products. So the lines we already have, there's some new and exciting products that are coming out this year uh, that I think the industry needs. And then we also, as Elatech, have picked up some new lines that we represent that we're pretty proud of. Okay. So what's today's title? So today's title is Industrial Automation. It doesn't have to let go. <laughs> so what are we talking about? We're talking about a new product line for us. Yes, Shunk. Shunk. It's a fun one to say. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so Shunk, a very uh, German uh, 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 sounding title. Does it complement Siemens lines? It does. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> and it also complements Fanuc. Ah. It complements Motoman. And it complements Hanwha robots, which we represent. Um, also, uh, very complimentary to some of your other collaborative and industrial robots, such as KUKA, uh, such as Universal Robots. So just because we don't represent those lines doesn't mean we don't support our customers that use them. So certainly Shunk has its place there. But everybody knows Shunk as one thing. Okay. For the most part. Grippers. Grippers. So let's talk about that. Let's just get that one out, 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 out on the table. Most people, at least in the U.S., uh, think of Shunk for grippers. And so pneumatic, and they're starting to release electric grippers. Ah, oh, neato. Yeah. So with an electric gripper versus a pneumatic gripper, uh, there are certain things that we can do. Okay. Uh, so with a pneumatic gripper, um, you're open and closed. That's it. That's it. And and with an electric gripper, now we can control things like grip force. Oh. We can We can close to a certain position and stop short, and then on the next product, move to a different position, and things of that nature. Wow, a lot more flexibility there. So we got more flexibility. Uh, We're going to be looking at some of those things today. But most everybody thinks of them as gripping technology. And what I will say is Shunk's claim to fame is, as far as grip force, both in the pneumatic and the electric, is second to none as far as some heavy-duty grip forces. Uh, so there's a lot of companies out there that make pneumatic grippers and electric grippers, but Shunk pretty much takes the cake when it comes to how hard you can grip something. And then they have some built-in things. For example, 
Uh, it's always been something that as, as, as uh, machine builders uh, design equipment and end users, you know, with their designers design equipment, uh, what happens if the air shuts off? Oh. If you're holding a part. Oh, I don't know. What does? Does it fall? or It does could it... fall. Oh, that'd be terrible. <laughs> well, so let's talk about what could happen if the tooling, if the part you're holding falls. I mean, if that part you're holding is very intricate, very expensive, you know. It'd be expensive. You don't want to drop it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's very heavy and there's a person potentially in the way or a body part, you don't want to drop it. So Shunk builds in some of these things to where, uh, with their, their new designs and their grippers, to where it's a mechanical lock. So um, it will hang on to the part even when you lose air. That's neat. Yeah, so some interesting things there. Now, but here's the other half of that. Okay. So there, then probably a lot of our listeners are out there saying, well, you can just design the this solenoid valve is what we call center center blocked design or center exhaust that's blocked, which means that uh, if it's a dual if it's a dual solenoid, which means it's got to shift one direction to open and shift another direction to to close. But if it hits the center, air does not move, which means it will hang on to the part. Oh. Not a big deal, Brandon. What are you talking about? Well, there is the situation where the operator uh, or a maintenance person or somebody tries to go in and remove the part. And if you remove it, there's a chance, because it's under pressure. It damage it? It, it could. Well, not so much damage the part, but it can slam shut. Oh. On a finger. Oh, that's what I was... Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Ow. Or Or some... some part of your hand or something like that so it can injure the the person Mm -hmm. their design is such that it holds that force but when you when you wedge out the part it does not slam shut oh okay pretty cool that is so um got a good safety mechanism in there it's interesting because it's one of those things that for me i didn't think about i guess just because i've done it for so many years if there's air on the line when you if you don't want it to slam shut then you need to design it so that it drops the part or exhaust it in a safe way or something along those lines. Um, but the fact that it can maintain holding grip force, which can be substantial because it's shunk, but also not slam shut if you if someone were to remove the part, uh, is something I haven't thought about, but they did. So. That's smart. Very smart. So the And then, of course, there is the, as you've got on our backdrop here, the collaborative grippers that they yes do. do you want to take a video of, to look a video of that you've or? got videos yes i do <laughs> yay so beth is producing no, herself I, into no. 2023 <laughs> we're just trying to make it interactive here <laughs> so so we got some videos so right here you can see that and if you want to pause that oh you got uh, it. you can kind oh. of see the well, that's good you can see the edges there uh how they're uh they're smooth now you remember you remember what i always say about collaborative robots that you have never seen a collaborative robot used collaboratively right and that by collaboratively collaboratively i mean not guarded that's it yeah and so you have to do a risk analysis a safety risk analysis on every robot collaborative or not anybody that tells you otherwise is selling you something Okay, walk away from them. You have to do that. And so part of that risk analysis is you have to look at uh, the shape of the tooling, the robot surfaces, the mounts, everything, even the parts you're picking up. Okay. Uh, and you have to do an analysis based upon the, the, uh, the force per area. So in this United States, we usually refer to that as pounds per square inch. Okay. And so that's how many pounds of force are being concentrated across an area. And so the larger the area, the more that force is uh, spread out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the analogy, uh, if you were running with, uh, I think I, when we were talking about this earlier, I said paper towel roll, maybe something better than that, maybe a cardboard box. Okay. And so if there's 10 pounds of force and I come against you with a cardboard box, even if that box is solid, 10 pounds of force is, is going to push you but it's not going to impel you. Yeah. If it's a uh, you know ten, let's say an eight and a half by ten a sheet of size of sheet of notebook paper or something, that much area because that ten pounds is uh, is distributed across that area. But if I instead was running with scissors, yeah, and I pressed the same ten pounds against against you, oh, that'd go through. It would impel you, <laughs> yeah. and so collaborative grippers if you're going to use the robot collaboratively as the shunk 
you notice they're smooth edges. They may even be soft edges. Okay. Uh, and, and things of that nature that are built into the gripper. Now, the gripper fingers and that kind of stuff needs to be designed in to make sure everything's smooth, smooth edges. Because if you get smooth edges, then now you're dispersing that force versus a point like scissors. Okay. Um, and then again, it does come up with to what you're you're moving if you're moving if you're doing material handling if you're doing spraying and something like that again it's just the it's the it's the point at which is the highest con- concentration of force that could come into contact with the person okay or you put a safety scanner on it <laughs> or you guard it with some some light uh hard guarding yeah uh but but if you're going to use one collaboratively it must be a collaborative gripper and that's what Shunk's got in this okay. video. All right. So you can kind of see some of that. Yeah. Let her play. I had all you pause right. it. That's all right. Let everybody kind of see that thing in action. And it, it's a, it can be pneumatic or electric. Okay. Oh, oh here oh, we go. Oh, this is a neat one. All right. <laughs> this is a big one. Okay, wait. I'm going to put all these videos and links to them in our show notes. So if you're listening to it, uh, you'll... Be, you can go through the show notes and see it. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. for those that are watching the video, I'm going to stand up and go away from my microphone because I'm going to point at the part behind me that is the shunt gripper. Hold on. Whoa. My goodness, it's huge. Yeah, so that big uh, aluminum-looking block That's is the, the gripper. gripper. Wow. And so the the things coming off of that looks like some, some extrusion was used here. And, of course, uh, uh, Kuka robots, which we don't represent, but I have to love them because – Tennessee orange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but nevertheless, um, th- that's the gripper. So you can see how it's connected to the industrial robot. You see the, you see the points on the edges. So, so, uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's a box. So each corner has a, has a point. Uh huh. And so you're not going, this is, of course, is an industrial it's a, robot. Industrial. It's not yeah. Okay. Okay. But, but that's just to point out the difference of what I was talking about. That's where we would, if we were doing a collaborative risk analysis, it'd have rounded corners. We'd or have to have smooth, smooth? corners okay. and all this kind of stuff. Okay. That's where you would have to focus. And you can see also where it connects to the robot, that plate up there, that steel plates got, uh-huh. got, uh, got hard edges. Yeah. Um, so, of course, this is an industrial robot. This is not collaborative, so this would be guarded. Yeah. Uh, but go ahead and let it play. Okay. You can kind of see what's going on here. So the gripper fingers are the really long extruded pieces. You can see that go down. But you can also see how much range uh, within the gripper itself. So you see how it's spread out now and how much it comes in. Uh, so we've got a large uh, uh, a large um, amount of grip area, if you will, or stroke. And then, of course you got to have grip force. you got to be set up to mechanically to lift. I don't know how much that box weighs, but it doesn't look like. It looks like it'd be really heavy, yeah. especially with that type of gripper on it. Yeah. So you can kind of see here is an example of that same gripper. Uh, that's 100 to 400 millimeters. Now, that's uh, in, in, in English units, that's roughly 4 inches to 15, almost 16 inches in stroke. And so you can do a lot of things there. Do you want to go to the next video or? Uh, hey, you got more videos? Oh, yeah, I do. Wait, right. there's more. I know. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, you're gonna do. How, how, do, we, how do we do it? What know. do we got? I don't remember. It's been a. It's been a year. <laughs> hey, but wait. There's more. <laughs> okay, right. this is kind of cool because yeah. this is... Okay, so let's stop right okay, here. Okay, okay. Uh, we, we talked a bit about the grippers, and that's what a lot of people are... Uh, Shunton is known for, in the United States at least, for gripping. But did you know... They also do linear motion. Ah. And so <clears throat> the most basis, basic linear motion uh, is a, uh, is a they, they don't do rod type cylinders. Okay. Uh, which means it's like a cylinder going in and out. Uh, but they do two other types of objects. As far as their standard basic linear, they do belt driven modules. Okay. And then they do ball screw modules, what we call rodless modules. So linear motion where we would take their their actuator and, and, and put on a, a Siemens servo motor, a scout servo motor, something like that, somebody else's servo motor uh, and gearbox and whatever, uh, they can do that. And so not a lot of people realize that they have a linear motion product, but they also have linear motors. Oh, okay. And then within their grippers, they have um, rotation built into their grippers. And then finally, as you'll see when you start this video, I think, is they have uh, what, we, what I call a direct drive or a rotary actuator. Okay. And so what we're seeing here on the video is we've got some 
looks like some linear modules on the sides. We've got one in the middle that's that's doing a, a rotation. That's that's a kind of a direct drive rotary. Uh, you can see over there in the back, the one in the back is spinning. The back center, see how it rotates. So those are rotating type type deals, and it's all built in. So now we can take Cartesian systems and do some very high speed things. We can do this with uh, standard grippers. We can do it with standard linear like ball screw belt driven type type motors and integrated uh, linear actuators, but also linear motors, which are high thrust, high acceleration, uh, very, very accurate. Okay. Okay. What type of ap applications do you use with those? Linear motors? Yeah. Well, and you know, a lot of times people will use linear motors in, in clean room environments okay. because they, they don't put off the foreign material that a belt driven system would as the belt wears or, or the ball screw may as, as you, um, as the grease kind of goes out. Yeah. Um, also, if you're doing a whole, whole, whole oh, lot of... let's pause on this one. Go ahead, pause. Okay. If you're doing a whole lot of uh, iterations back and forth and back and forth, uh, you, you do have linear bearings and stuff that are supporting it, but but you're on a linear motor, uh, you're air-gapped. Okay. So uh, you don't have actual... Um, uh, couplings and stuff like that that can wear okay, okay so you keep your accuracy and you get a lot of iter iterations back and forth okay this is cool because yeah. of the swivel type type gripper now why is this appealing to me uh we've talked about three types of robots primarily oh three types of got the wrong one three types of robots three types of robots we've talked about industrial robots collaborative robots and Scara. Okay, Scara is the right one. <laughs> so there's Scara robots, there's articulated arm oh, robots, the on it. and then there's Cartesian robots. Okay. Now you came up on our very first podcast, I think it was, ever, ever, ever. You hit me with spherical robots and polar robots and all this stuff that aren't very, very typical. But uh, in today's industry, an articulated arm robot is like a, a you know a fanic robot or like that Kuka robot, uh, where we have multiple degrees of freedom. A Scara robot is a usually a four axis or five axis with rotation, a type robot. Um, but it only moves really in one, you know, it's kind of the shoulder and the elbow kind of movement. Um, whereas articulating arm gives you a wrist, a shoulder wrist, or shoulder elbow and wrist. And a Cartesian is just X and Y or X Y and Z. Okay, so what we just saw in the video could be X, Z, if they were just moving in one plane. So they're moving out, and then the Z axis would go up and down. So that's just two, you know, the X, Z plane. Or you could do it in X and Y, so like a, I don't know, a plasma cutting table or something like that. Or or if you're you're doing uh, inspection or dispensing or something, we will do an X, Y system. But a Z usually can be electric or pneumatic, but that gives you your up and down movement. What we're looking at here with the uh, swivel module, swivel module, the EGS, is I can now take that onto a XYZ um, Cartesian and make it, give it the wrist type of movement rotation, a theta, which you have been able to do, but it's not, it's not as sexy. Okay. It's more difficult to engineer in a motor spinning on the end of a Z axis that's moving up and down. This is made to be a gripper. It works like a gripper. So you would have to have the motor spinning and then you have to add somebody's gripper to the end and all this stuff. This is totally integrated. So go ahead and hit play on that and you can kind of see this thing work, I think. Uh, so as it, uh, and it's electric. Oh, that's neat. It's not pneumatic. So we can move specifically between, uh, uh, I think it's what, 40 degrees to 290 degrees or something like that. But it will rotate oh, they went past to the it. end. Yeah, yeah. So here's some of the linear modules, the electric linears that we were talking about, um, the integrated stuff. But but nevertheless, be able to take that swivel gripper, put it on the end of an XYZ, and now I can rotate the part as well. And so that's in, in a very tight, compact package. So that's something that's pretty awesome. I think we'll have another video of that here coming up. Yep. So now we're seeing the linear stuff. And so, again, this is the stuff that, that, that Shunk may not be as well known about in, in the United States. Uh, this is talking about just how you mount all that kind of stuff. So we, we kind of move through this thing um, uh, with that. But there's also, I don't know if you've got a video of this. I don't know. Do you, do you want What's me your to next move video? For, okay, let's go ahead.
This that's is, the swivel the, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Play, it, and it'll show the inside of it too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll look at this. So so yes, this thing. Well, that's just spinning aroundy kind of stuff. So there we go. Uh, so you see how you got that wrist type movement and the gripper all integrated together. And it's electric, which means we can control how much we grip. We can control where we rotate to and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so, yeah, this is getting to the, the angular contact bearing design. That's that's what they're known for mechanically, grip force and high accuracy and things of that nature. Uh, that's where they're turning it around. So all that's integrated. We would have to do that in individual components before. Oh, wow. And so you can get it's a really like compact. put it all into yeah. a package. Oh, nice. It's a, it's a slick package. And so I really, I'm really excited about this product. Wear free. Yep. That's a, oh, here's the inside. That's all your control. So it's all integrated. You don't have a secondary control and everything. So everything comes straight in your IO control to your force controls, everything right there. That's where it's controlling the, the grip forces and that kind of thing. And you just do that with a screwdriver. Just mechanical. Wow. That's pretty neat. Pretty neat. And so, uh, it's, and very it's compact. It's slick. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. okay. Now, the thing I don't know that you've got videos of um, that a lot of folks, unless you're in the machine tool industry, don't know shunk for is work holding. Okay. I don't think we have that. Okay. Video. So, work holding is another thing that we're. Oh, this oh, you is want a. I, I'm going to keep this playing because it's pretty cool uh, to show it, an actual application using the swivel gripper. Yeah, so it's swiveling it, catching both sides. So there, there you go. one axis here, and then they're going to do another two axis. Yeah, so that's an X, Z with a theta. Because of this gripper, we can do X and Z. So it's moving in the X direction, and then it's up and down. That's Z. A very high-speed way of doing things, Cartesian over a scara or something like that. Less expensive, potentially, according to what you're dealing with. But in the one you had before, it was just a Z with a theta. So we would we would have to do that separately. Here's, here's a X, Y, Z, theta. Because of that integrated gripper. See how it's rotating things around? Yeah. So we would have had to do that or stick a pneumatic oh, that would uh, have gripper that been has really moved. complex, yeah. wouldn't it? It would get it gets really out of out of whack because it's not it's just not compact. Yeah. Do you want to see what the next video is? You got another one? Yeah, just this is the last one. Oh, okay. This is kind of showing us what we were looking at before. Yeah. But you can see at the top, you can see how they're doing all that. It looks like some IO link and things of that nature as far as the CAN bus. So if this was pneumatic, you would have, we'd have pneumatic lines running everywhere. Oh, all this is it wouldn't electric. be clean at all, would it? Yeah, it's a lot cleaner uh, as far as the, the electric stuff. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see there, there's the rotary underneath, the rotary index uh, that's going on. You can see some of the, the swivel. Uh, yeah, that's swiveling at the bottom. And then also some of the grippers are swiveling. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of swiveling going on. <laughs> so that's right, swivel, swivel. But the work holding that I was talking about. So, so um, we just came off of January, mm -hmm. and January, some say, some call Collaborative Robot Month. Yes. And so we're doing more and more uh, collaborative robots. Uh, Hanwha, for example, uh, the reason they got into collaborative robots some six, seven years ago was because of uh, wanting to do um, uh, mach machine, uh, they want to automate uh, the material handling uh, or machine tending specifically for CNC machines oh. and CNC mills. And so it's kind of a easy and easier uh, deal other than the wiggle jiggle. Uh, well, I don't know what episode that is. Who knows? The wiggle jiggle. <laughs> Give you ten dollars uh, if someone can tell me. That's right. Uh, the wiggle jiggle episode where we were talking about unloading a lathe. So a lathe uses a collet, three jaw or four jaw collet, and so it's new. It's a usually pneumatic, and when it opens up, it releases the part, and the robot can come in. It can be presented. The robot comes in, grips it, it releases, it pulls it out. Assuming it doesn't have to wiggle jiggle, it pulls it out and can can do it and load another one in there. And so as far as lathes with collets, uh, it makes a lot of sense to do robot tending with a collaborative robot. And we have grippers to do that. We talked about the collaborative grippers and stuff that Shunk offers. Um, however, if you're doing like a, a CNC mill, uh, which we have a CNC mill, a Haas CNC mill here at Elatech, um, we have a vice. Uh-huh. And common, uh, for me, common brands for that kind of vice are Kurt Vices or really well-known and that kind of stuff. Well, unbeknownst to me, uh, if you're in the machine tool industry, which I'm 
fairly new to that. I'm, I'm not a machinist. <laughs> uh, but Shunk is also a big name in machine tooling as far as what we call work holding. Oh. So vices and stuff like that. But they take it a step further, and their vices, just like their grippers, are pneumatic or can be electric. Okay. And so now with the robot, the hard part about the robot is uh, if, you've got a, if you've got a manual vice in there, somebody's got to be involved to tighten the vice or loosen the vice. So it doesn't make a lot of sense as far as doing the, that thing. We try to do all kinds of fixtures with pneumatics and that kind of stuff, but Shunk has these stu- these things all integrated and pulled together and ready to go. And they'll tie in, we can make them tie in with collaborative robots. So now, if you have not thought of this, if you're doing uh, machining in a, mach- in a mill type or where you've got a vice type work holding or some type of fixture holding for your for your um, your parts as you're doing milling operations uh, not necessarily lathe we can handle lathe already with the collets that are there but if you need work holding on a mill shunk can get us there oh wow that's really cool so we can tie that that's together innovative. with our again with hanwha with with fanic with motoman but also we can help you tie it in with with other uh, brands of robots as well that's nice very nice so yeah that's the things everybody knows them for grippers but linear actuators rotary actuators linear motors and work holding are some of the things that they do that many aren't aware of and we're excited about that yeah, that yeah. relationship very much so. so. Yay for Sean. <laughs> yeah, let's see. What's an even better one? Yeah. There we go. Did you know they're a family owned business? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I was reading up about them before this. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're coming up on 20, roughly 25 minutes here. All right. We're ahead of schedule. That's good because we've got some things to talk about. All right. Take us through. Well, uh, our, uh, we're going to change formats here, aren't we? The producer has spoken. <laughs> so we're going to we're going to let go. <laughs> yeah. So you, you got a double meaning today. Yeah. So it's not just grippers. It's also changing the format. So tell us a little bit about what you got in mind. Well, we are thinking about uh, we're going to do uh, tech talks, mm-hmm. some uh, shorter tech talks, and um, and I think what I'd really like to do, if we can, to do some uh, stuff like. Uh, announcements of what's available now yep. so uh as far as inventory inventory stuff, that's stuff, a hot one right it, there. It, it is and that might be a difficult one to do so i would encourage people to follow us on linkedin mm-hmm. and uh and subscribe uh, uh on youtube, to our YouTube so they channel. can get notices on on those because uh for those inventory ones those are going to be quick. that's going to be very timely and uh, you know you're going to have to be on it otherwise you know they're going to be gone before. you know we've <laughs> talked about that a lot of course of course industrial automation doesn't have to has been uh, has had a fantastic uh, uh, um, audience a fantastic following uh, and that following goes all the way across the globe it does and australia is still our second yeah. uh, most listened to I think that's so awesome. thank you guys <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, australia <laughs> Brandon's accused me of out out kicking my coverage. Yeah, so, so as far as marketing goes. So we're going to pull back and focus more regionally. And with these tech talks and shorts, it's going to it's gonna be more of a local focus. But I would still encourage folks to follow us if, that, if well, that's of interest to them. We're still going to be talking about products. Absolutely. And we're going to be talking about lines. And so none of that's going to change. But yeah, I, I do think that we want to start making it a bit more relevant, especially when we're talking about things like inventory. Yeah. Because our inventory uh, and what we're seeing and what we're able to do, what we have here, here in Knoxville, Tennessee, is highly beneficial to folks in in the eastern Tennessee and Tennessee area, and probably not as beneficial to those in in, in Australia. Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, so we but we're trying to keep it relevant for everyone. But uh, but I'm sure you all understand that concept. The other thing I believe we're going to do is put a bit more focus on uh, letting people see us versus hear us yes yes so we're going to be doing more video more instead videos. of the audio portion okay. so but the audio portions will i mean they'll still be available for folks to listen to and we might i'm not discounting putting the podcast off altogether mm-hmm. if we have a special person coming by and they want to be on it well, hey yeah let's do it well for 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 everyone out there that thinks like beth which is probably 99.9 percent of everyone listening uh this will be uh It'll be like, this is a duh statement that I'm about to, to, to make. But for the rest of those that are like me, podcast means audio. 
Yes. And so when she says, uh, I'm not discounting the podcast or, we're, you know, we might stop the podcast or reduce the podcast. She's talking about the audio portion Correct. versus the video portion. And for me, I, I don't know the difference. I mean, I know the difference, but I, I don't think of any difference because most of the podcast, I, 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 I enjoy listening to podcasts. But almost all the podcasts I listen to are on the YouTube channel yeah. or maybe they post on LinkedIn or something like that. So there's a video element. Uh, not that I sit and watch the people. <laughs> that sounds kind of weird. Uh, but if they're doing illustrations and stuff like that, it's nice. But but it's just that's the, the forums, I guess, that I utilize for a lot of the podcasts yeah. that I listen to. Uh, usually I'm in the car and I'm not watching. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope not either. My wife certainly hopes I don't. Uh, but uh, uh, but but nevertheless, it's just a different medium, and so so don't be uh, concerned about that necessarily. Um, what else? Uh, I don't think I have anything else. Well, we're talking. So so yeah, the uh, the 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 new format uh, is something that I think's uh, going to be of of hopefully of really great benefit to those in our area, I in our that. region. That, that's uh, what we want to do. And we've so, talked about this. So guys, let me just go ahead and, and manage expectations. So we've talked about this, what's available. Uh, Beth and I have talked about this for probably six or eight months because it's not just once a day. It's multiple times a day where the question comes to us saying, what do you have available in stock? Do you have anything like this in stock? I mean, and everybody's hearing this, and we've been hearing this for many, 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 many it's months. It's like a broken record right now. <laughs> and the interesting thing, and, we, and we've touched last year, we touched on, just want to let you know, you know, these are in stock and those are in stock. But but it really has to be, uh, if if we, by the time we produce the podcast and all that kind of stuff, that was here here and gone. Yeah. And so, so we are changing the format primarily so we can be quick. Mm-hmm. Agile. To yeah, job to send set, to send those out and get the word out to you guys to give us a call. We've got this uh, if you need it. Um, but at the same time, to reduce the amount of production and all that kind of stuff that comes into play, because that's what was throwing us off. We recorded that two weeks ago. It was here two weeks ago, but now it's it's come out and it's so bad. Sorry. two weeks and one day later, and now it's gone. Yeah. And so we want to try to avoid that. So yeah. it's 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 really I think what we're going to do for the best of of our regional audience. Uh, but we certainly don't want to discount you guys across the globe. And yes, thank you very very much for listening. So yes. As we roll in, just shy of our 35 minutes. All right. Good job, Brandon. We did it. <laughs> Woo! All right. I want to uh, say a thank you to Santiago for um, making us sound good. Yeah. The audio portion sound good. So yeah. Thank he you, takes Santiago. care of all of our audio. He's yes. our audio producer. And so thank you very much and for... Thank you guys for listening and um, and catch us, really follow us on our on LinkedIn and subscribe on YouTube and get noticed so just so everybody knows we're not going to be every two weeks it's going to be when it is it's going to happen when it happens and it's going to be about uh, especially if it's for inventory <laughs> yeah and, and so we're going back to the old newspaper days of extra extra read all about it because <laughs> that's the way we're going to try this thing so so yeah make sure you subscribe uh i don't know what ringing the bell does i think it gives you notifications mm-hmm. and those kind of things do what you got to do because when it comes out if you want to hear when it comes out it comes out and so uh so yeah so happy 2023 yeah happy valentine's day go get you a chocolate bunny and a i don't know a jar full of peanut butter <laughs> mix well, we, them together have you we, ever done we, that we know what your favorite yeah is. <laughs> yeah i learned that from a good friend of mine years ago uh and uh and enjoy your your valentine's day uh and uh we will be with you very very soon yes Thank you, guys. We appreciate you. All right. Take care. See you, Beth. Bye-bye. See you. Hey, guys. Thanks for checking out today's episode of Industrial Automation. It doesn't have to. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, make sure you give us a rating that's pretty doggone high and do that everywhere you listen, including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We'd really appreciate it. Also, don't forget about our website. That's www.elitech.com. That's E-L-L-I-T-E-K.com. If you want to reach out to us there, you can fill out our contact form. We'd appreciate it. 
Also, you can email us at info at elotech.com. And certainly for those of you that still like to dial the phone, give us a call, 865-409-1555. We'd love to hear from you. 